Well, here we are. Been several days since uh, I've been in the shop, and uh, it's been bitter cold here. Sub-zero temperatures and all that. Uh, all of the shop's quite warm. I've just been busy with uh, other house maintenance items. And uh, so I took the... You know, positioned the tabletop uh, now that I think in the last video I said it was finished um, so I've positioned it on the table where I think it best fits um, all the way around and uh, got it marked and then I took the tabletop buttons that I had made earlier they're five eighths of an inch thick and uh, I've got some one inch number eight screws here that uh, protrude. I had a little practice one here. And they're pre drilled with uh, all the same way. And I did them on the drill press. And that screw comes through the bottom three-eighths of an inch so the top is a half inch thick so I'm leaving myself a uh, eighth of an inch there uh, so I should get pretty good uh, traction so now to drill the pilot holes for the uh, so I've got my uh, tapered drill here and uh, the idea is I don't have to drill at all through the uh, through the buttons because they're all pre-drilled and um, that drill bit extends a sixteenth of an inch under the three eighths of an inch so I'm not drilling all the way to the uh, bottom so we'll run it through the hole you think I have enough uh, table buttons we have three on either side and uh, two on the ends and they have a slight bevel to them on the bottom so they slip into the table and uh, that causes them to uh, lift just a hair off of the the bottom of the table and uh, obviously when the screw tightens up it'll put pressure on uh, into the slot and uh, I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. I don't know if you can see the uh, gap uh, all the way around. So that as the table decides to move back and forth uh, this way. And the ends, we could go all the way in because we don't expect it to move in that direction. But uh, I've got to leave some gap between the button and the uh, apron so that the, as the table expands and uh, shrinks it will still stay flat and uh, tight up against the apron while uh, allowing it to move back and forth so uh, I'm going to drill some holes and uh, I'm going to hand uh, tighten these screws into their slots and so I'll check back with you later. Well, there we have it. So it's attached. And uh, I could turn it back upside down, but you can see the buttons there. And I did break off two of the screws, even though I was hand tightening them. And uh, they're number eights, so they're uh, pretty good size. But um, to an, an examination of the screws, looks like there was two sets in the box there. One was a little thinner shaft than, uh, than the other ones. So I think the two that broke off. So I had to pull the buttons out and put in new ones. But uh, it seems to be pretty good. So now we have to work on the molding. That'll be next. And I probably will take the top off. For finishing uh, so it will be coming on and off but uh, at least I didn't uh, put any screws through the top so there we have it 
So here we are starting to work on the molding. So the top molding is uh, 15 sixteenths of an inch wide by uh, 3 eighths of an inch uh, thick. And uh, the first 7 sixteenths are, is flat. And then you have a uh, about a sixteenth of an inch dado there. And then the uh, last five sixteenths of an in inch of it is a cove. So I used my, um, well, this is three eighths inch stock. And uh, what I'm planning on doing is I need about uh, four feet of it. So uh, I'll just rip off um, this piece uh, if, if the molding turns out any good. So using my filister, I uh, lowered uh, this seven sixteenths, or rather, uh, yeah, I think it's seven sixteenths or portion of it, uh, about a sixteenth of an inch. So the filister set up, the depth stop is right. It seems to be about right. So now I got to cut a cove. I'm no uh, Bigford, but. Uh, what he suggests is to cut a uh, dado uh, so that you have two points to rest your uh, your coat uh, the how or the round that's going to make the uh, the coat. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, cutting a dado so that we end up with two points. And we're just about there. for the cove, uh, right in the middle of that, and uh, what I did to, to start it was you scribed a, scratched a, a uh, groove, and then uh, you tip the, uh, the plane over on its edge to uh, get it started, and then work your way back until you make a good pass, and then so now we'll switch to a, uh, a cove, probably about a three-eighths of an inch cove, maybe a quarter inch. We'll test it out, and uh, so we'll be back within a minute. So I've got a three-eighths of an inch ground here. finish the stroke. Let's 
jammed. Passes and uh, I think we've got it. 